Don in London, hello. December the 21st today, early morning. As you can see, it's still dark outside behind me. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, alcoholic now in recovery one day at a time. And my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places, things. Obsessing and not getting balance in anything because I was still searching for something and it's a bit like Wordsworth when he wrote the poem what was it? Uh, I wandered lonely as a cloud it starts and actually when he first wrote it it's, it was actually I wandered lonely as a something and maybe that's me too I was like that for a long time because I didn't realize that living in the day sober was far more interesting than fixing myself or taking the edge off with a drink or trying to be perfect or trying to be something I didn't know. So a little bit more calm these days. Uh, some people call it serenity and serenity is conditional on my spiritual condition and my spiritual condition is living in the moment of now as much as possible, not going over the past, raking it up in an inappropriate way or fantasizing about what the future may hold I've only got one day, this one so what helps me stay in recovery one day at a time first of all uh, family, professionals, medical people kept me alive long enough to get to rock bottom where I could not see any way out with self will or my own willpower and almost like a light bulb going off in my head although that's a very difficult one to do to say really I needed help I cannot do it on my own and then fellowship came into my life and that was the fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous and I never speak for AA never can, never will because it's you, full of unique authentic people who will speak for themselves where they will and I share about uh, fellowship I don't share particulars of anybody else I just share how fellowship helps me on a daily basis to keep sober and some of the literature which is available when I can't get to meetings like yesterday I had flu jabs or a flu jab and a pneumonia jab immunization which is treating like with like in a way so I have some of the symptoms which are very achy and because it's icy out good sense says that stay in when I would really like to see my fellows and my friends in recovery so sensibility comes into it and that's about balance so the fellowship of AA helps me and has helped me with the 12 steps for me to work as a person 12 step action program all about action to live well one day at a time and there are 12 traditions in the fellowship which hold it together in unity, service and recovery so open, honest and willing living as much as possible knowing that on any day denial can come in that I can't believe my situation I can't go out to a meeting because it would be silly but my head says I want to go to a meeting to see my friend so I have to temper my actions with reality and what is possible it might, might seem like a simple analogy but that's how it works doing the sensible thing doesn't mean it's not exciting because often the exciting thing to do is the sensible thing to do to have an adventure of some sort on a daily basis and I guess that's what fellowship does for me as well so what is AA? I share here from this little card which has the AA preamble on it and then I'll share some of the daily reflections and a bit more from the big book of AA around acceptance being the key so here we go Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And what's important in there is that AA is 
there for one reason, sobriety. Yet, at the same time, every single person in the fellowship is allied with whatever they believe in, their sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institutions. It's the way life is, so we still have our outer, our normal life, as well as fellowship to keep us sober. So, sober comes first, lean on fellowship, and it's always the many voices in the fellowship, not just one, and certainly not mine, alone, which helps us make up our minds, make free choices, make our opinions and beliefs work for us on a daily basis. So fellowship is the foundation of living for me, inasmuch as it keeps me sober so the rest of my life can work. And the daily reflections for today from this book, uh, daily reflections covers the 12 steps, one a month, and the 12 traditions, one a month, and December is all about step 12 sharing a message of experience, strength and hope with other people and living a, a spiritual life and as far as I've come to understand so far the spiritual life is, is the ability to cope with now living in the moment the ever present imperfectly perfect moment of now because life is going to continue with or without us so it's better to be included soberly I feel not to control life but still to make freedom of choice in the moment given our life experiences. And how do I know it's working for me? Well, taking account of the fellowship being an emotional, spiritual and physical improvement program. I hate the word program in this context. It's a, it's a fellowship which offers emotional, spiritual and physical well-being. So if I have those emotional and spiritual and physical well-being in the moment of now, my choices are more free and not controlled by al alcohol and hopefully not necessarily controlled by everything around me. But I have accepted that I am powerless over people, places and things, so if I don't try and control them, I have freedom of movement around most of what's going on, free to make choices today. So. Step 12 is all about helping other people <coughs> as best we can and as I see it, it's the difference between doing good, doing something good uh, and do-gooding and the big difference is if we do some good another person is free to make their choices free of our opinions and beliefs uh, but doing good means that I'm probably moving into you should do this because it will be good for you that's do-gooding and it's not helpful because it, it builds up resentments in other people so for the December 21st, it talks about and shares about listen, share and pray. When working with a man and his family, you should take care not to participate in their quarrels or even their happiness, because we, we start getting into their stuff. You may spoil your chance of being helpful if you do. So in other words, detachment in a way. All you're there to do is help the person get sober, not become... Uh, their vicar or their priest or their advisor because that is really not what we're there to do is to share a message of what works in sobriety to help us be free to make our choices well in an open honest way and find truth love and wisdom when trying to help a fellow alcoholic I've given in to an impulse to give advice yeah and perhaps that's inevitable but allowing others the right to be wrong reaps its own benefits the best I can do and it sounds easier than it is to put into practice is to listen, share personal experience and pray for others and you know whether, whatever our beliefs are are formed by our life experiences so some people on the planet believe in God because that's what they've come to believe some people are agnostic or atheist and some people have been all those things in their lives depending on their life experience so we make up our own minds around faith praying, meditation, reflection. The good news is whether we pray and reflect to whatever the higher power we choose, the gift is always to get clarity of mind about our own purpose today to live as best we can in the circumstances we have and then to put it into action. It's all about action always in the fellowship it's not about standing back and watching, but sometimes we do, because we stand back and listen. 
listen to the experience, strength and hope of our fellows. And if we hear something which is absolutely good for us, we can take it on board. And if it's absolutely against our belief and our choices, then we don't take it on board. But we don't criticise others for their outlook. It's a fellowship of unique, authentic people, staying unique and authentic. And we lean on each other, because if we try and keep sober leaning on one person, if we go downwards, we're probably likely to take the other person with us. So we try not to do that by keeping it a fellowship where we lean on, lean on the many, the many voices in the program or the fellowship of AA who are staying sober and especially sometimes when they're not sober because they've hit something in life which has caused a relapse or a slip and that can happen to anybody at any stage in their spiritual living. We have to face facts. You know, whilst we may say rarely have we seen a pale a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Sometimes the life path is so difficult we fall by the wayside. Well, anyway, I haven't done that for some time, in fact some years. But I do know that life can get on top of anybody and if I don't go to fellowship and keep on listening I might be in trouble. So, daily reflections, I'm finishing that bit now and followed by the serenity prayer and then the acceptance piece follows. So to good God or good conscience, depending on your belief system, the serenity prayer or the serenity reflection can help you to God or good conscience. And it goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today. And now, if uh, you haven't switched off already, uh, from the AA Big Book, there's a passage on acceptance which pretty much everybody who's been around a while in AA knows. And it's one paragraph. And uh, I'll read the paragraph, and then I want to just read the bit before it as well. So I can read the paragraph twice because it's, a, it's great. It's one of those things I don't want to forget ever in my life. So page 417 in my great big book, this one which comes in smaller, handier pocket sizes as well. Page 417, and acceptance was the answer. And acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing or situation, some fact of my life, unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing, happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to, be, I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. And when I read that, it was one of those passages which really st struck home in my early days. And I love it. Whenever it's read out at a meeting, as a person's choice before they do their sharing, I sigh with relief that there is a part just before which sort of puts it in context. And I'd like to share that. And it comes from 415 onwards. Eventually, the psychiatrist discharged me from the hospital. And Max and I began going to meetings ourselves. Right from the start, I felt that they weren't doing anything for me, but they sure were helping Max. We sat back, we sat in the back and talked only to each other. It was precisely a year before I spoke at an AA meeting. Although we enjoyed the laughter in the early days, I heard a lot of things that I thought were stupid. I interrupted sober as meaning interpreted. There you go, slip of the word. I interpreted sober as meaning drinking but not being drunk. When a big healthy looking young fellow stood up there and said, I'm a success today if I don't drink today, I thought, man, I've got a thousand things to do today before I can brag about not taking a drink for God's sake. Of course I was still drinking at the time. Today there is absolutely nothing in the world more important to me than my keeping this alcoholic sober. Not taking a drink is by far the most important thing I do each day. 
It seemed that they all talked about all that they talked about at meetings was drinking, drinking, drinking. It made me thirsty. I wanted to talk about my many big problems. Drinking seemed a small one, and I knew that giving up one drink for one day wouldn't really do any good. Finally, after seven months, I decided to try it. To this day, I am amazed how many of my problems, most of which had nothing to do with drinking, I believe, have become manageable or have simply disappeared since I quit drinking. I had already given up all the narcotics, most of the pills and some of the alcohol when I first came to AA. By early July I had tapered off alcohol completely and I got off pills in the ensuing few months. When the compulsion to drink left, it was relatively easy to stay off alcohol, but for some time it was difficult to keep from taking a pill when I had an appropriate symptom such as a cough, pain, anxiety, insomnia, a muscle spasm or an upset stomach. It has gotten progressively easier. Today I feel I've used up, I have used up my right to chat chemical peace of mind. It helped me a great deal to become convinced that alcoholism was a disease, not a moral issue. That I had been drinking as a result of a compulsion, even though I had not been aware of the compulsion at the time, and that sobriety was not a matter of willpower. Willpower was killing me. The people of AA had something that looked much better than what I had, but I was afraid to let go of what I had in order to try something new. There was a certain sense of security in the familiar. At last, acceptance proved to be the key to my drinking problem. After I'd been around in AA for seven months, tapering off alcohol and pills, not finding the program working very well, I was finally able to say, OK God, is it true that I, of all people, strange as it may seem, and even though I didn't give my per permission, really, really am an alcoholic of sorts. And it's, it's, it's all right with me. Now, what am I going to do about it? When I stopped living in the problem and began living in the answer, the problem went away. From that moment on, I have not had a single compulsion to drink. And acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I'm disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing or situation, some facts of my life unacceptable to me, and I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in me, changed in the world, as on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. He forgot to mention that I was chief critic. I was always able to see the flaw in every person, every situation, and I was always glad to point it out because I knew you wanted perfection just as I did. AA and acceptance has taught me that there is a bit of good in the worst of us and a bit of bad in the best of us, that we are all children of God and we each have a right to be here. When I complain about me or about you, I am complaining about God's handiwork. I am saying that I know better than God. And I don't. And that's why the reading today was important to me, because in any way or form in the past, I probably passed judgment on other people and hurt them, either by excluding them from my life or including them so I can try to change them. And these days, the only thing I need change is me and my attitudes on a daily basis. Live in the world, be a part of it, be included, and try not to control one darn thing. So the serenity prayer to good God or good conscience as you understand for yourself your unique authentic belief system, your belief system. So to God or good conscience, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to th change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.
Don in London. Hello, December 21st, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, quite addicted to work, relationships, collecting, material, you name it, I could, collect, I could do it and do it to excess because I believed in perfection, I guess. All my upbringing was about do I let it because it took the edge off. It made me feel joyful, happy, sleepy, relaxed, entertained, sad, unhappy, hateful, loving, you name it, every emotion seemed to be available to me when I drank. And it did take the edge off. And what it tended to do was when I wasn't drinking, suppress my feelings, emotions and understanding of life. So I never really understood what was going on with my feelings. And the primary one inside me often was fear. Fear of being found out, fear of being less than other people. Hence the striving to be perfect and never so, never perfect. And what I've learned now in a journey of recovery, which is a, for quite a while, an acceptable length of time to actually get some sort of understanding and perspective, is that I can understand my feelings as they are today, just for today and no more. So what helps me do this? Well, family, friends, community, professionals kept me alive long enough. I even went to a rehab and uh, it was £25 a day, which is about $50 or less, $30 a day. So it was a very utilitarian rehab. But what it did afford me was the luxury as a homeless person to actually have a roof over my head, be tormented by community groups and one-to-one -one sessions. And I mean tormented because I was a very reluctant student. And at the same time, it gave me the opportunity to go to meetings of the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. And the difference between rehab and AA was, rehab, rehab felt very unloving, very predatorial, very uncomfortable. But AA meetings offered sanctuary to be me, to be myself, and not be tormented by those inner demons which were being, I suppose, winkled out of me when I was in rehab but I've done it all before and the problem is if we've done all the theoretical intellectual you name it the thinking process of yes I know why I'm the way I am and why you're still digging down into me without giving me the opportunity to deal with the anger the frustration and the, the denials that have gone, over, gone on over the years what sort of action will I do well, I self-discharged and ran away, went to the nearest bar and off-license and got loaded. But the AA Fellowship offered a way out, and although the journey was rocky, and believe you me, being homeless is not a, is not a good state to be in, especially if you're not designed for it, and I don't think anybody is, we have to find our path. And eventually I got back to going to AA. Got a roof over my head. It was pitiful and horrible. But at least it gave me the opportunity to try sober living. And it took a long time to understand that I couldn't do it on my own. So, fellowship keeps me sober. That's the fellowship of AA. If I'm not sober, I can't do the rest of my life. So, sober is first. And that sounds harsh, but it has to be. So I can love people and they can love me back because I'm human again and I can find something useful to do. So what is the Fellowship of AA and how does it help me? Well I'll share the statement of intent here and it goes like this. Get it the right way up. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So, only one requirement for membership, a desire. Only a desire to stop drinking and then to share the message. And that's what I try and do here. And I do it because 
it helps me and it also helps people who can't get out to meetings. And December is all about the 12th step of the program, 12 steps of action for individuals. And you know, the, the gift is that uh, we need to do them all in a day if we can, if they're appropriate and if they are applicable. And there's a, a book called The Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions. And in this, in the final twelfth step chapter, it, it gives a summary of the twelve step action program. And I like it, I love it, because it sums up in a few words, and I've just about got time to do them here. So these are the twelve steps. Page 110. AA's manner of making ready to receive this gift lies in the practice of the twelve steps in our program. So let's consider briefly what we've been trying to do up to this point. Step one showed us an amazing paradox. We found that we were totally unable to be rid of the alcohol obsession until we first admitted that we were powerless over it. In step two, we saw that since we could not restore ourselves to sanity, some higher power must necessarily do so if we were to survive. Consequently, in step three, we turned over our will and our lives to the care of God, all good conscience, as we understood him or it. For the time being, we who were atheist or agnostic discovered that our own group, or AA as a whole, would, not, would suffice as a higher power. Beginning with step four, we commenced to search out the things in ourselves which have brought us to physical, moral and spiritual bankruptcy. We made a searching and fearless of moral inventory Looking at step five, we decided that an inventory taken alone wouldn't be enough. We knew we had to quit the deadly business of living alone with our conflicts and in honesty confined, confide these to God and another human being, or to good conscience too. At step six, many of us balked for the re practical reason that we did not wish to have all our defects of character removed because we still loved some of them so much. Yet we knew we had to make a settlement with the fundamental principle of step six. So we decided that while we had some flaws of character that we could not yet relinquish, we ought then nevertheless to quit our stubborn, rebellious hanging on to them. We said to ourselves, this I cannot do today. Perhaps I can stop tr crying out, no, never. Then in step seven, we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings, such as he could or would under the conditions of the day we asked. In step eight we continued our house cleaning for we saw that we were not only in conflict with ourselves but also with people and situations in the world in which we lived. We had to begin to make our peace and so we listed the people we had harmed and became willing to set things right. We followed this up in step nine by making direct amends to those concerned except when it would injure them or other people. By this time, at step 10, we had begun to get a basis for daily living, and we keenly realised that we would need to continue taking personal inventory, and that, when we were in the wrong, we ought to admit it promptly. In step 11, we saw that if a higher power had restored us to sanity, and had enabled us to live with some peace of mind in a sorely troubled world, then such a higher power was worth knowing better, by as direct contact as possible. The persistent use of prayer and meditation, we found, did open the channel so that we, we had, so that where there had been a trickle, there now was a river which led to sure power and safe guidance from God or good conscience, as we were increasingly better able to understand Him. So, practicing these steps, we had a spiritual awakening, about which finally there was no question. Looking at those who were only beginning and still doubted themselves, the rest of us were able to see the change setting in. From the great number of such experiences, we, could, we would predict that the doubter who still claimed that he hadn't got the spiritual angle, and who considered his well-loved AA group the higher power, could presently love God and call him by name, or just simply good conscience. And in, uh, in the end of these videos, although I haven't got very much time, I just say the surrender prayer to God. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is for me just for today.